So folks, how's everybody doing? Just uh, find the post in the group real quick. Yo, yo. Yo. What's up, man? <sighs> <laughs> One thing to the next day. You know what? It's it's interesting. I think like before I went on vacation, obviously I had that crazy ass uh, time where I was I was doing that all the time, and I don't know if it like during that time learning to just transition. You know, and like I'm just noticing that uh, when there's stability, like that grounded feeling, it just allows for the fluidity. It, it sounds so weird. When I'm grounded and like connected, it creates more fluidity and this ability to kind of like dance between this and that um, used to feel very jarring. And now it just feels like easier. And it's nice to be here now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I have a red light on me. So it looks like you're. Uh... Ready to start a service over there. I know, right? It's uh, it's so interesting. Like the light, it's so potent. This red light, it like lights up the entire room. It'll change in about twenty ish minutes, and then people will be like, well, "I'm glad, I'm glad you're uh, compounding your your light, your light streams with uh, doing something healthy for yourself." You know, you know, it'd be really good if we could do an entire live stream while sitting in a cold plunge and not leave for an hour. I got up to 12 minutes in Colorado in a cold plunge. Wow. Yeah. I sat in I sat in dad's for like six minutes and like my body heat didn't return to normal for like a long time. I was like, okay, maybe it, that felt like too much, but that's awesome. Well, you, gotta, you gotta go like back into heat source afterwards. There's something very interesting that happens that when your body sits in that place for a certain amount of time, I don't know if you got to it, where it almost like, it almost feels like it turns on this heater inside and yeah. like you actually get like hot in the cold. Yeah. So it's the exact opposite, right? Like it actually creates a, a, a thermal layer around you. But my understanding is uh, I listen to a lot of uh, Alex Huberman. I don't know if you guys know him, but yeah. he's a, a neuroscientist and he's just amazing with biology. And he's like the right way to do it is actually keep fluttering. Yes. In the water. Yes. So, so I've done you, that. You're, and... not, you're not sitting in there for 12 minutes. No, no, I did. And, and this one actually had jets, like, ah. like jets blowing on you also, which, which helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I really, I enjoy the process of it. And I enjoy like with awareness, feeling and watching mm -hmm. everything. Cause there's like the mind part that gets freaked out and it's like, Oh my God, this is too cold. And then there's like the body things that begin to happen. And like, I can actually start to feel as like these blood just starts to move to different aspects of my body. It's really, uh, it's one of honestly cold plunge. I think cold plunge and sauna back and forth is one of my favorite things. And it's so good for your body. Oh. I just told my wife, I'm like, at San Diego doesn't have like a cold plunge membership. And I'm like, I'm like, I'd actually like to start one. Like you start a service where people like pay monthly just for cold plunges. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Anyways, <laughs> if you don't know about the benefits of cold plunge, I've been taking cold showers strictly only for the last same. three months. I won't, I won't take a warm shower anywhere for the same, same reason. Um, and I found something interesting uh, by doing that is that I'm like, I can regulate my body really fast now, uh, generally speaking. But if the water falls on the top of my head specifically, that's where the body goes into like a completely different response to go like that from there. And I could feel how it's like my spinal cord is literally getting cold and like, it's like sending a signal down there. But if you do that, it's very different than not doing that. 
like actually having the head under the water is like uh, like I, that's when i get the oh hi wake up you know like very awake yeah anyway, very very good stuff the science on on uh cold sauna. Is just uh, sauna and cold plunge i mean yeah yeah the, the the studies behind it are absolutely breathtaking and like unequivocally if you sauna for four days a week for 20 minutes uh, you know at a, at a certain temperature like the health benefits and longevity benefits are second to none i can tell you i i just feel like so when i was skiing six days in a row cold plunge sauna like your legs don't get tired it's yeah. crazy and i know we experienced that oh by the way uh, on that on that topic um the cool mitt yeah I found these things that you can hold that are cold. Okay. And I was doing them today during tennis. And yes, the real deal. Like uh, there's two things that I noticed. One, my palms don't get explain, sweaty. Explain, which in explain to everyone, explain to everyone the context of what you're talking about. So they're at least let in on the secret. Yeah. So, so Andrew Huberman did this video, which was very cool where they created this thing called a cool mitt where they had this tight end, a uh, football player, come into a gym and they were like, how many uh, dips can you do? And he's like, 150. Tell them, tell them, what, tell them what a cool mitt is, because that's like a total I will, I will, yeah. So, so they're like, how many dips can you do? He's like 150. They're like, okay, put your hand in this device. And this device basically like, he puts his hand in and it runs water, it circulates water at a very specific temperature, which is 53 degrees. And I've learned that it's the water, the, the, the coolness can't be freezing. So you can't like hold ice. Yeah, because you, you don't want to constrict the blood vessels in the hand for this to work. Yeah, it needs to be somewhere between like 52 and 60 degrees. That's kind of like that sweet spot. But this device is 1500 bucks. So anyway, this guy puts his hand in it and got up to over 600 dips in the same session. So normally 150, 600 by putting in his hand in this. So what they found is that by like your palm actually controls a lot of the temperature in your body. And so when he put his hand in there, it actually sends the signal through the blood vessels to cool the blood in the body. And it was pumping lactic acid out of his body. So like he, it's almost like a recharge and he can go again. So if someone went from 150 to like 175, you'd be like, okay, you know, marginal. But he did 4X plus what he was normally doing, which is bonkers for a, like, like an elite athlete. This is not like, you know, you'd think like he'd shave like this much. It was 4X. So I was like, I got to give this just try. That machine is 1500 bucks and it's clunky and heavy. And I was like, I'm not going to. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm not doing that. Um, and I'm not like, I don't have a home gym where I would, you know, like that's not, but I play a lot of tennis. So I did some research and people have created... Uh, it looks like a pipe. There's one, and the ones that I got look like two soda cans, maybe like slightly bigger. You put them in a freezer. There's a chemical inside that like keeps them cold, but only for about 30, 45 minutes. And then what you do is you hold it. So like in between sets or in between games, I would just like hold it 60 to 120 seconds. And two things that I found. One is... Uh, my legs felt lighter throughout the entire match. In fact, today I did the best against this guy that I've ever done. Uh, and then the other thing, which was a huge benefit is in South Florida, like your hands get really, really sweaty and it makes the racket spin in your hand. My hands were dry the entire time I played today, which is unheard of. Like I have tried every potion, lotion, powder, grit, like everything, nothing works. It worked, meaning that like the bot, like the physical body is obviously cooler because it's trying to expel heat from the hands, which is why your hands get sweaty. Right. So it was profound. And by the way, I got those things on eBay. It's called Cool Can. I think I bought two of them for like sub forty dollars. That's amazing. I'm gonna get that shot. I, I imagine the next year or two, you're gonna see every athlete on the sidelines just holding on to cool cans, or whatever. This is this is gonna be. It's like a re it's a revolution for for athleticism, like any, it's crazy. any. I imagine like marathoning, where you have these in your pocket and you just reach in and like cool the body down while you're like 
the people are going to break every shatter every record right now in athleticism yeah it, it was wild so I, I meant to tell you like i finally got a chance to try them i bought them before i left for the trip and haven't had a chance to use them so incredible um yeah very okay. cool well the first 10 minutes had nothing to do with the topic of today but hopefully you guys enjoyed the conversation and learned something here why uh, you hold these things and all your anxiety melts away <laughs> there you go mission accomplished everyone go home so yeah um uh, again, if you guys are new here, new-ish here, and, and you just want to say hello and let us know that you're new to the community, we have a lot of new people coming in. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, other communities promoting to join this community, and uh, just the, everything is kind of scaling and growing around here. So um, we're almost at 42,000 members, which is pretty incredible. So all of you guys have been breaking in the first rule of Fight Club as far as we can tell, which is amazing. Um, having said that, if you uh, if you look down the news feed in general here, one of the cool things that we started, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, was the 28-day meditation challenge. You can start that at any time. Probably if you joined you know, in the last month or so, we actually automatically sent you login instructions for that. If I was you... I would absolutely take advantage of that resource, even if you do nothing else with us, even if you never look at a program, even if you never do anything, please, for the love of God, yes. go, try, go try those meditations. They're free. Um, there's four of them. Um, you know, we say this every time. These are not your go quiet your mind meditations and sit here and do nothing. We call them active healing meditations. So you, you, there's actually something for you to do while you're meditating. And uh, again, just read down the newsfeed and see the kind of results people get with participating in these particular type of um, meditations. And uh, they're, they're extremely, extremely powerful. They they combine a, a host of techniques together that are extremely simple. And if you can master the skill that um, we, we train in, in there, you are gonna see big, big changes in your life, okay? So again, regardless if you do never do any of our advanced work, never do any of our live events, never do any of our money programs, never do anything else here. Please, please, please take advantage of that. We, it's our it's our wonderful gift to you. And I promise you, whether you understand it or not, the principles behind it at all, it doesn't matter. You do it, you're going to see some big changes. So please do it. Can you just also talk to them about, uh, I know certain people, it's like, if I miss a day or they yeah. want to go back to day one, they want to start, like, can you just tell them, you know, about the logistics of it? Like if they miss, if that. Yeah. So, so we release a meditation per day for you because there's no point for you to just like click them through. But the logistics are, is that it's set up as four separate meditations, each one practice for a week. Truth be told, you can practice each one of those meditations for the rest of your life. Okay. Um, if you miss a day, that's fine, right? Like it's set up like a 28 day thing. And and we want to urge you to essentially build a new habit, right? To build a new habit, we all need reminders every single day. I mean, one of the simplest things I tell a client when we're when we have to like a new practice, I'm like, hey, if you did this five minutes every day, then they come the next week and inevitably, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot. Happens to all of us, right? So the simplest thing is I always say, what do you do every day that you don't forget? inevitably we end up on brushing teeth or, you know, taking a vitamin or something like that. I say, great, go put a note for yourself, right? Where you brush your teeth that says, do this thing or where you get your vitamins from, put a note right there. And then you won't forget because you just attach it to a habit that you've already developed. And so for you, it might be like, Hey, if you forget, no problem, write yourself a little note, go practice this meditation. I know for most of you guys sitting in meditation for 20 or 30 minutes feels like an eternity. All right, because generally speaking, people are asked to sit in meditation for like five minutes. Here's the deal with that, though. This way or that way, meditation is something that serves your entire day, serves your entire week. The, investing those 20 or 30 minutes to do that are going to make what Elon generally says. It's not about sitting on the pillow. It's about the 23 and a half hours when you're not sitting on the pillow. And so, you know, just like going to the gym if you're not going to do that consistently, you're not going to see consistent results and you're not going to build a habit. We all need to get, we all need to break that threshold of discomfort and uncertainty in something that we're doing before it becomes, we have, you know, if you start mastering something, you wonder why it was ever hard for you before. Cause you suddenly just, Oh, okay. I know how to do that now. And once you do that, even at the end of 28 days, you're like, eh, I'm not going to continue the practice. Okay. Give it a shot. But after 21 to 28 days of meditating regularly, and you stop meditating 
the contrast mm. in your experience should be so monumental that you immediately will be like, I got to go back to do those meditations. And that's kind of an experience that we want you to have. We want you to realize, holy crap, it was so much better. I had so much more alignment, so much more ground, so much more peace, so much more focus. You know, like I have moved mountains in this period of time. And really all you have to do there is sit and listen to something. It's a huge return on investment. So like no one can do that for you. I've been meditating now. I don't know, consistently, I want to say for like probably around 10 years, but like eight years, quote, unquote, seriously. And it, it is a stark contrast on the days that I do not. In yeah. terms of how I show up in my life and how I show up um, with the people around me, and uh, it is a ever growing, constantly teaching practice, and it is probably the best technology that human beings have against, you know, what what science or therapy likes to call like a diseases of the, diseases of the mind, which is really just a dysregulated ner nervous system. So if you want to learn how to regulate yourself, this is one of the ways that you can do that. In our advanced work, we show you some more, more advanced stuff about regulation as well. But, um, you know, you're here. You came for a reason. You raised your hand. You might as well do something with, with, with the tools being handed to you. Having said that, let's um, parlay that into a... Um, <laughs> yeah, and Tracy, it's not about thank you and you know coming to your practice it shouldn't feel like hard work it should just feel like a commitment to myself this is a commitment to to me to my well-being to my safety to my uh regulation within myself to my ability to connect with other people like everything people come to us and say i want this i want that we're like okay yeah you should start with meditation <laughs> then yeah, i want this yeah 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 well more money yeah yeah sit down <laughs> meditate it's like oh uh yeah i'm dealing with this disease i understand yeah sit sit, sit down and begin to meditate. No, I want to show you. Yeah, yeah. No, sit down and begin to meditate. Right? Like this is a, a, a proven tool. And it's not even a tool, guys. It is accessing a part of you that is only accessible through that act or the or the lack of action in this way. But most people look at meditation as sitting still and not doing anything at all or trying to quiet yourself or doing all that. This is not about that at all. It's not about any of those things that, that, that Western-minded people think it's about. Something happens in your body when you sit and do the practice in the way that we're going to teach you that cannot happen under any other condition for a human being. And, and there's an intelligence in your body that responds to this and will not activate under any other condition, perhaps with psychedelics, and again, go do the research on psychedelics. I think they're an amazing tool, but we all can't sit around and be high on fucking mushrooms all day long. So, uh, well, you know, maybe. Maybe. And, and maybe the society would be more fun for it and better. But, you know, I, I don't think we'd be able to get a lot accomplished. Like, no one's building a skyscraper while they're, um, you know, elucidating in fourth and fifth dimensional reality. So, um, just saying. Give it a shot. There's not much you can lose and there's a, a whole bunch that you can gain. And um, I think it'll be eye opening for most of you guys. Again, just look down the news feed and see some people's shares about what's happening for that. Broski, where can they go to uh, grab the meditation? You guys can, uh, you can either go to soulsandseekers.com forward slash freedom, or you can scan that QR code right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. We should probably like get this thing started, huh? I didn't realize we didn't get this thing okay. started. So, um, anxiety, eh? You want to get? You want to start? Why don't you do it today? You do the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I was uh, actually sitting at dinner table. I don't know why I'm sharing this publicly, uh, but I was sitting at dinner table yesterday, and my daughter. Uh, came out and said that she was having panic attacks, mm -hmm. which was a huge, yeah, it was a tough thing to hear, uh, obviously given what we do and, and how we serve. And um, now truth be told, like, I don't know how much of that is, you know, she listens to podcasts and watches videos and like, I don't know that she actually knows what a panic attack actually is. Um, but in the same way, like with anxiety, what I want to offer is that 
um, we throw around words and labels like anxiety, stress, panic attacks, and things like that. Um, and what I want to point to first before we go into all the other stuff is it's just a label. How many of you guys, if I was like, hey, do you want anxiety in your life? Anyone signing up for that? Anyone's like, yeah, please. I'd, I'd love more anxiety in my life, right? When you hear the word anxiety, what are the things that you experience? Like, what do you feel? What do you... Um, what do you notice when you're like anxiety? And just start to pay attention is like, what is happening internally? Are you excited by the proposition of anxiety? Or do you actually feel like a contraction and like a pushing away from, like you're like, I don't want that. Like, no. And I'm going to say something that we, we hear all the time and we know, yeah, someone says tightness and pressure in the chest. What you resist persists. And so if you guys put your hands together like this, like in front of you, try to do it this way, and then just push, like push and try to push with one hand, like, like literally just try to push with one hand and notice what happens. It doesn't matter how hard you push with that one, the other one is gonna find to meet it with equal and opposite force. And so if there is this no around stress, around anxiety, around panic, around whatever it, fill in the blank, you are creating an internal resistance to that which is. Okay, so let that sink in. And this internal resistance to that which is does what? In the same way that you're pushing against it, it is now pushing back against you. And so how many of you guys, like when you're in these stressful, anxious situations, you're actually noticing that it's, it revs up the system. Like you actually create more and more of that which you are not wanting. So anxiety, stress, overwhelm, panic, restless leg syndrome, ADHD, ADD, all of it. I'm telling you, like people have lived with conditions Humans have been around for a very, very, very long time, de de depending on, you know, like who you listen to. But let's just assume a very, very, very long time. Okay. Do you think the word anxiety and bro, maybe you can look into this. Like, I'm curious, when was the word anxiety actually created? I just have a curiosity. Anxiety is a new phenomenon. Stress is a new phenomenon. Overwhelm is a new phenomenon. Restless leg syndrome, a new phenomenon, right? Like ADHD, a new phenomenon. And the reason that labels are created is because once something is labeled, now medicine, Western medicine, has a pill that they can sell you or a program or a thing or that that they can sell you to alleviate the label. And that's all it is. That's what the label is. And we have a certain association with a label. Like there's an association to the word anxiety. None of you are like, hey. right? And so that relationship, even to the word, is going to create some sort of response in the body. So how do we kind of like shift and move through that? The only way that we can shift, uh, the only way that we can shift and move through that is we let go 
and release the label. That's step one. And what we learn and what we practice, and one of the things that our meditations are incredibly good at helping you to achieve is the ability to witness and notice from a different place, from a place of awareness, the sensations that are occurring in the body. Because if you look at anxiety and you look at excitement, the physical body is actually having very, very similar sensations. Quickened heartbeat, shallower breath, right? Maybe like sweaty palms, things like that. Same, same thing, but in one event, you're, you could be excited. In another one, you could be anxious. <laughs> one, you're like, yay, give me more of that. The other one's like, nope, make it stop. Physiologically, though, the same stuff is happening. And so if we can like shift back and actually begin to witness what is arising in the body. So a lot of the work that we do with people, it's like we sit with them and rather than them labeling and saying like, I, I'm feeling pain in my heart. Okay, well, tell me about the sensation. Go into the sensation. Oh, I'm feeling a swirl in the heart. Okay, a swirl is very different than a pain right? A pain is something that I need to get rid of. A pain is something that's bad. A swirl is, okay, there's a swirl. I'm noticing a pinch. I'm noticing tingles. I'm noticing heat. I'm noticing cold. Where are you noticing that? Heart? Where in the heart? The heart is a 3D object. Is it the top of the heart, the bottom of the heart, the back of the heart, the side of the heart, bottom right, left of the heart? Like, like, right? And what you're starting to do is you're shifting your focus. You're shifting awareness from fighting something internally, which exacerbates the situation, to simply watching. Right? Like if you are watching, uh, I don't know, kids play in a park, uh, a bug walk up a tree bark, a tree branch or whatever it is, right? Like you're just watching. Do you have an opinion about what the bug should be doing while it's walking up this tree? No, you're just like, okay, there's a bug walking up the tree, right? There's no like, oh my God, this bug is going to destroy this tree. And what? No, there's just like, there's a bug walking up the tree. If you can get to a place where you can watch what is happening inside with that same level of just allowing and witnessing, like you're watching someone else. But the someone else is like, the movie is what's happening inside. And what you're doing is we call it opening the aperture. It's like you're, you're allowing awareness to become aware of more and more and more subtle experiences. So what happens is, and I'll, I'll finish with this thing. It's like, you know, when you're, when you're, let's say anxiety is 10, right? Like that's level 10. So you've, you've gone through the levels and, and you reach 10. Once you're at 10, it's like DEF CON, you know, red button alert, the whole thing. And now the mind is trying to figure out how to stop this thing from happening, how to get myself out of it. Some of you drink, some of you smoke, some of you take pills, some of you eat, some of you exercise. We all have a, a, a release valve because when the system gets overwhelmed, it needs to do something. Okay. So that's at 10. Have you ever thought to get curious? Well, what's at nine? And what's at eight? What's at two? What's at one? Because it doesn't go from on to off or off to on. There's, right? Like there's a process in which the system moves. And so if you could learn practices that allow you to become aware of one, or two, or even five, for that matter, how much better equipped will you be to deal with at a one, two, or five versus interacting with it as, at a 10? 10 is like, your fight or flight, the whole system's hijacked, you're not even there, it's like, the world's fucking ending. But there's something that happened at one, that created that process. And that one might be this like slightest of twinges in the lower part of the stomach. 
that's when your system was actually pointing to you and be like, hey, pay attention. But that was the whisper. But you don't know that language yet. So you're not aware of the whisper. The only thing that you're aware of is the loud screaming like, holy shit, we're going to die. This is over. Like, this is so bad. Make it stop. That's what you're operating from. And you're trying to do work to understand how to make that thing be quiet. But it's like if, if before the child was tantruming and flailing, laying down in the middle of the supermarket because they didn't get their candy, like there was something that happened steps and steps and steps and steps before. And if you could have awareness when the child came up to you like, mommy, will you pay attention to me? And you actually had that knowing to like go and pay attention to that child, that tantrum is not even coming. So anxiety is not something that like you can get rid of. It is, a, it's a natural phenomenon in the body to take a charge on and become overwhelmed. If you don't have the ability to witness the revving up of that engine and to meet it earlier and earlier and earlier, you are always going to deal with the engine that's about to blow up instead of like, hmm, did I hear like that weird little clunk? Hmm. <laughs> right? Way easier to deal with it at one than at 10. Not even, not even deal with it. Be with it. Just be with it. Yeah. De deal dealing with it insinuates yeah, that we would have to turn it off in some way. Like, you know, you're, you're the reason for most of us, and then we can do an exercise right now with everybody here. If you guys are game, let me know in the chat box. We'll, we'll try something together. Um, but the reason is, is that most people are unwilling to go through their anxiety. They're trying to uh, control it in some way, shape or form. And certainly like Elon pointed to in, in our society, it's become extremely commonplace to use pills to avoid it uh, you can't really you can't really avoid anything they can give you pills that you know cut the body off from uh, the mind from listening to your body or feeling sensation in there but the body's still feeling those sensations just because the mind's not aware of it anymore it doesn't mean that that's not happening so if i got enough of you guys to say that you want to do the exercise we can we can pop in so just give me like a yes or a i or something in the chat box to indicate that you want to do the uh the exercise and we can do that um i i have been dealing with anxiety my whole life until i was 29 years old i'd never even used the word because when you cool when you live on the the east coast of the united states it's it's a i think i think a way of life and i and i moved to california i had a girlfriend soon thereafter and then um she would use the with this word anxiety all the time I'm like why the fuck is she so anxious all the time and then and then one day it dawned on me i'm like wait a second that's what anxiety is i'm like I have a lot of that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, Elon's watched me like I am a, a relentless hair twister in moments of stress in my life. And like my hand won't come down and I have all these, uh, this is embarrassing to share, but quirks, right. That are anxious quirks. Like when people bite their nails, anxious quirk. Um, another one that I have, this is such a weird one. I'm sorry guys. I'm going to have to call myself out on this one, but you know, like these little hairs that you grow out over here on your fingers. Since I was a teenager, when they started growing, I would pluck them out one at a time with my fingernails. Not joking. I've never seen hair there in my life. Like it doesn't, it never grows. But over this last two years, I have hair there. <laughs> and, and the reason I have hair there is because I don't experience as much anxiety as I used to. To say, like, here's the difference. I'm still experiencing anxiety. It just has space to move through my body fluidly. We just had this, we just had a, a conversation with our coaches training. It's like every time someone's trying to resolve something, every time they're resisting what's so, every time they want it to be any other way than the way that it is, it stays exactly that way by default, by its function. You cannot oppose anything within yourself or outside of yourself and watch it go away. I don't know if you guys notice this, but as they present our world to us as this crumbling, separating, tribalist type of world, which I don't believe that's what's happening at all. I think that's just uh, good media uh, fodder for uh, making a lot of money when you divide people and make them think they're in a camp. It's easy to sell shit to them. But I don't, uh, I've traveled the world. People are extensively pretty joyful and happy being around each other and rather welcoming and generally speaking want to be serving each other like 
I don't, I don't know what world they're experiencing. It's not the world of my experience, but like you can allow, like my point is like standing in opposition to that doesn't make you go away. It doesn't help it go away. We all want love. We all want compassion. We all want connection. We all want to feel safe. We all want well-being. None of that is possible when you're opposing anything, not outside of yourself, not inside of yourself. And the world that we get to experience outside of ourselves is a direct, direct and infallible reflection of how Those, you make your, make your video bigger. Oh yeah. yeah. Right I just realized. Yeah. It's probably more effective when you can see me, huh? Yeah. Um, so like it, it is, it is a it, infallible reflection of how you feel inside every part that has every conversation that has every kind of feeling that has every kind of sensation is directly influencing how you're perceiving this planet, how you're perceiving your relationships, how you're perceiving your financial situation, how you're perceiving your, your health, how you're perceiving your ability to take on new habits like meditating, right? Like what says I can't do that or what says that's too hard or what says that's not possible for me. It's not you. All those things are hundred percent possible for you all the time. But there's a part in you that's having an experience and it's having a sensation and that sensation is dictating how you think. Standing in opposition of that creates more of that. Those people who are constantly worried about being anxious all the time are the most anxious people. That ultimately turns probably into OCD, right? Like, like OCD is trying to control the environment, which in essence is really trying to control the anxiety a person's feeling inside. I know when I'm highly anxious, I clean my house. For the same reason. Oh, it's like, oh, if I can just organize things out here, like I'll, I'll organize my insides, right? Like my <laughs> wife knows this. She puts, my, my wife purposely says things to put me into an anxious state. She's like, yeah, the house will be clean in 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm like a cleaning tornado. So some of the reasons I know this stuff works, again, like, this is hilarious, but like, and embarrassing, but I think it's worth sharing, right? So that you get the finger things. I'm not twisting my hair as much and I'll give you the last one. Definitely not. No, right? Elon, Elon spends a lot of time with me. Like, I, I, I do it so much less. It was literally a defining characteristic of mine is having twisty hair all the time. Yes. Okay? Like, like to the point where it was, like, dreadlocked. Yeah, I, I used to, like, dreadlock my hair. I never thought of it. But then one day I was like, oh, shit, it's an anxious response. <laughs> like, I just thought I really like it. And I do really like it. Like, it, it feels wonderful for me. But the reason I like it, it has a soothing, calming effect on my system. But there's so much anxiety in there. It never stops. And then the last one is, this is embarrassing. But I'm going to share it because I, I think it validates the entire thing. Is like, my entire life, when I go to the bathroom and there's lots of men around, like, it, it's just tough to go. Right? And that's embarrassing. Not, not stage fright. Not worried about size don't care about any of those things like it's just that it won't come out or it takes a lot really long time to come out and i was like this is so annoying and i'd be like are you afraid of something what's happening in there again not it's not an ego response it's not an identity it's not how i'm thinking there is a response in the body of not feeling safe what happens when a person doesn't feel safe contraction right well, we will do the experiment i promise you're contracting in your system and you're you're squeezing something Guess what? Everything is contracting. Your cells are contracting. How do I know this works? I don't have that problem anymore. After 30 fucking, I don't know how many years, 38 years of doing that, not a problem anymore. Because it's not psychological. I didn't have an insight. There wasn't a breakthrough. Oh my God, finally I can pee next to other men. Like, it, it, it's not like that. It's not like that. So like, that for me is how I know it's 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 a now it's a a recalibration of the autonomic nervous system that has been responding to its environment in a particular way. And it's not doing that anymore. And it's not because I'm controlling it better. In fact, it's quite the opposite. I am managing a whole lot less. So everything is much more relaxed. So. Thank you for listening to that. And now to and on to the exercise. So why don't you close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And realize if you can in this moment, where is your awareness looking from right now? 
see if you can locate where your awareness is looking from right now. And generally speaking, as we look for our awareness, we will find it, generally speaking, located behind our eyes. And suffice it to say, your awareness is not actually located behind your eyes. However, you have been conditioned to locate your awareness behind your eyes. That might be a breakthrough in itself right there. And when, you can, when you've been conditioned to locate your awareness behind your eyes, your awareness works in a particular way. And your conditioning is sitting there. We call this the localized conditioned mind. So for a moment, see what it's like to recognize that your conditioning, your ego, your identity lives in this quality of mind. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to somehow unhook your awareness from behind your eyes and choose consciously to bring your awareness down towards the body. And if you can, because we're talking about anxiety, there's going to be something going on in your system that's experiencing anxiety in its own way because it's recognizing the the frequency, the, the template of what we're talking about here. And so we can all find something anxious in, in our body. So like I'm finding a, a really subtle uh, sensation at the front of my stomach now. That feels like a mild hunger, basically, but it really is just uh, anxiety. And I would even go as far to say as oftentimes when people are feeling hungry and reaching for food, what they're actually not dealing with is anxiety in the body. And they, they're mistaking hunger for anxiety. And so they're using the food as a way to to calm it. Or, you know, we do the same thing with cigarettes or whatever it is that you do. Reaching for your cell phone over and over again when you don't need to. These are all anxious responses. Okay, there's some need in the system. So see if you can find where in your body. Might be around your heart. Might be in the solar plexus. Might be in your lower abdomen. Might be in your throat. And as you locate the anxiety, because I can't get feedback from you right now, obviously, I want you to just notice what's the configuration that it's in. Is it being compressed? Like it might feel like you're compressing into your center channel. It might feel like you're squeezing it. It might feel uh, like a jagged edge. It might feel cold. It might feel uncomfortable. You find the word that, that suits you. There's no right or wrong answer here. Okay, I can, see some, I can feel some of you guys touching it. And what might occur into the mind as you begin to watch, and again, notice if you're watching from behind your eyes or if you are directly experiencing from within the body. That would be two different things. If you are looking down from the mind at this part, it's not what I'm asking you to do. It's okay if you're doing that. But I'm asking you to, to unhook from there and bring the awareness down as if you were seeing the anxiety, like directly experiencing it from where the anxiety is. It's like almost from where that tension is, that's where the eyes are. Like you're... you're Viewing from the part. You're viewing from the tension. And we can view from anywhere, mind you. We can view from our hearts. We can view from our stomach. And this, again, might be a little bit of a breakthrough for you. Your awareness has nothing to do with localization. The awareness itself does, is not located anywhere at all in particular. It, there's a problem for humanity because it's been conditioned behind our eyes and only taught to leverage our five senses. And so we live in a world of illusion on our five senses. We only base all our reality and thoughts and feelings on what we can perceive. Science is the epitome of this. We got to be able to measure it or experience it in some way, not trusting our own esoteric direct experiences. I'm, I'm asking you to trust in your own intelligence, in your own direct experience. So see what it's like to look at anxiety from anxiety. And anxiety can look at itself as well, because anxiety is just a, it's like a consciousness in the system. And maybe it wants to say something. Maybe your anxiety wants to say something, like it has information to give you. 
And maybe that's all it's been trying to do is just get your attention and say something. Hey, I feel all alone down here. Or, you know, hey, what we're doing right now doesn't feel in alignment. It doesn't feel good. Uh, you're working too hard. Or that relationship's not working right now. Or you're not doing enough self-care. Or you've abolished your needs. And you got to start taking care of yourself. Just listen. And maybe it's speaking through intuition. Maybe it's not speaking in words. Or maybe it's speaking through a feeling. And so see if you can consciously choose. Well, first notice that while you're looking, there's probably an experience of toggling between what I'm saying, like viewing from there and viewing from the mind. Okay. So notice if you can see that, notice if you can notice the toggle. And it's okay if there's a toggle. I don't want you to control the toggle. I just want you to notice that, that there might be a toggle. And if it's toggling up to the mind, see if you can recognize that something is watching you watching. Meaning there's what we call a protector watching as well. And this part of you is curious and generally speaking, really just interested in your personal well-being and safety. And this is what we call a an egoic defense. Because really everything that we call identity, personality, ego, it's really just a way we show up in the world to defend ourselves. It's why we can't get to the stuff underneath. All we notice is the defenses. Everything that you guys want in terms of healing and transformation lies behind the defenses. Now, if we try to stop the defenses, just like before, if what you resist persists, it doesn't work. What we can do is simply notice that there is a defense that's happening in the system. There's some part that is trained to try and bring safety in this moment. And it likes to use defenses or avoidances or other different things to get through this moment. So what could be new here for you is instead of trying to get through this moment, trying to manage your way out of the anxiety, trying to figure out what's going on, can you relax all those parts and just be with your experience? Would it be okay to just allow for your experience to be here as it is? Not trying to change it, not trying to shift it, not trying to, tr not trying to move it. We are simply here to look. So take a look. What's the worst that can happen? You feel anxiety one more time? If you have, if you could put crisp on or mute, yeah, just your fanny in the background. Okay. And so, notice if you can, because the keys to the castle with what you guys want to do is not get around it. You want to go through it. Your body is desperately, desperately trying to get a need met here. Your nervous system has been trying to get a need met. It has been, it's not activating this anxiety because it wants to harm you. It's activating because it has an intelligence and that the way the body clears things out of it is by going through it. When we interject with our mind state, with our conditioning, and then we go do the thing that conditioning says to do, we stop that process dead in its tracks. Our body can't move through that energy and then it has to do it again and again and again and again and again in an attempt to move through that energy. And if you allow it to move just this one time, you will build a new pathway for your body to release and metabolize this energy. And then anxiety will never quite be the same way again. You might feel anxious again in the future, but it will have a place to go this time. And it's like, it's like you, it's like you opened up the, the hose, right? You got to turn the thing and then the hose, the water can move through it. But like for all of us, it's like, Hey, the thing is not even opened and the hose is kinked. So we got to unkink the hose. Then we got to open the thing nice and slow. And every time we look, we got, we can get a little bit more pressure and a little bit more pressure and a little bit more pressure. So the water can move more fluidly through the hose. And so if you, this is why our meditations, 
are worthwhile practicing. This is why they have a healing effect. This is why they will transform your life because you are stuck in the configuration of your conditioning. That conditioning has a frequency output. It has a template attached to it. That frequency and template is informing reality about the experiences that you need to have in order to learn your lessons to get this healing. And those experiences that keep happening over and over again to you, whether you like them or not, is the way that this quantum field actually tries to resolve itself and bring itself back to neutrality. And every time your conditioning steps in, that process can't happen. Cannot. Cannot get anywhere by bringing in the old and to try to create something new. You've already done that so many times, hundreds of thousands of times. You know exactly what happens when you bring that conditioning in, in those relationships with your finances, with your health, with your mindset, with your how your body feels, with injuries. You name it. The sky's the limit. So no one's going to die from watching a direct experience that they're having. We've never seen that happen. Right, Elon? We've never lost anybody in all these years? No, and, and even there are times that as we go through the experience, like, you know, people can touch anguish. Uh, people can touch despair, um, deep states of fear. I think the thing that uh, is important to point out is whenever you've tried, just switch our camera, by the way, whenever yeah. you've tried, you've been doing it on your own. And the mind doesn't like to touch those places. In fact, you've programmed the mind unconsciously to protect you from these feelings. And so every time that you touch it briefly, you'll like touch it and then it'll zap you out. It's almost like an electric, uh, electric, electrocution fence, electrocuted fence, right? It's like you touch it and then it zaps you away. So the reason this work works is because we do it inside of a community, right? Like you're not doing it on your own. You're doing it with the presence of another. You're doing it with the presence of the group field in a group. And you're able to go deeper into these places that you've blocked yourself from because what the mind has convinced you of is if you actually touch it, you're going to die. Like that's what it legit believes. Not as in like a you know, exaggeration, like it actually believes that if you went into that heartache, you will die. And the healing happens by touching and allowing for that energy to metabolize and process. And that only happens when we bring more and more safety into the nervous system. And the only way to do that, unless your parents were a Buddha, unless your parents were like gifted and, and worked in these practices is you don't have a template. You don't have a system that knows how to sit with these elevated sensations. And so slowly by slowly, sl bit by bit, like what we do is we, we sit with people and they borrow, this science is actually studying this now, that like humans can borrow safety from another. And as you borrow safety from another, it allows you to go deeper and deeper into those states, but you're not alone this time. And you're rewiring all the circuitry. They used to think like, if I touch this, I'm going to die. And now it's actually able to go and be through that process. And it just releases. And I just it wanna, is really I just, that simple. I want to add something really smart that you know I'm saying there is like, you can borrow somebody else's nervous system. You can borrow in quotes here, you can borrow somebody else's awareness. Okay. And if you're like, what, this is exactly what a child does with their parents. The child yeah. borrows the templating of the nervous system and templating of the awareness. If like you have money woes, right? Like you have money issues. Like Elon and I grew up with in an immigrant family. Nobody talked about money. There wasn't like a, Oh, money's evil. Rich people are evil conversation. None of that. It is an energetic exchange between our then impoverished parents moving to a new country and being immigrants and the perceptions of energy that we grew up around. I never remember having any conversations about money at all. None. 
But as I look at my life, I have this, those challenges that were inherited by my system. I imagine for those of you guys at home who may have had like an alcoholic parent, right? It tends to be a lineage then of alcoholism. Science and therapy looks at that as a disease. It's not exactly what's going on. There was a passing down of a certain type of nervous system that in the household, what was taught is when you have that feeling, you drink. Right. And I understand if you're in a 12 step program and you've been taught that it's a disease and all those things, like you, you probably want to punch me in the face, but that's, that's fine. Right. Like it's just, it's a perspective. There wasn't always a 12 step program. They didn't always know that alcoholism was a disease either. Again, that was also someone had to invent that paradigm and it's helped a lot of people. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but I'm saying what generally speaking is not being dealt with is an underneath feeling inside of the nervous system. And so People will talk about alcoholism as a disease that they live with that never actually quite resolves. And so they develop really good managers and a very good system for not drinking anymore. But then underneath it is there, there, there was still a, a person that drank. They were an alcoholic underneath and they never lose that label. I remember I used to smoke cigarettes for many years and I'll, I'll tell you literally how I stopped. I realized that for all the years I was trying to quit smoking cigarettes and become an ex-smoker. And what I never thought is, is that I can actually become a non-smoker. I'm not an ex-smoker, I just became a non-smoker. I did the work on whatever was inside that I needed to reach for that thing. And I realized when I actually meet the need of what's been trying to be met through smoking cigarettes, that I will literally be as if I'd never, like in the mindset, in the energy of a person who's never smoked at all, why not? If I could train myself to be a smoker, I can certainly train myself to not be a smoker. So I'm talking from direct experience of something that was in my life for, you know, 10, 14 years or something like that. That was a regular occurrence for me. So this is the work. You can play the game of avoidance and escapism for the rest of your life, and that would be fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Most of the humanity is, is playing that game currently. And these parts will subconsciously sabotage you everywhere, all the time, everything, everywhere, all at once. That's what they will do. And you won't, and you won't really notice. It will just look like things in your life are not working out, but you'll notice that how it's not working out is very familiar. This has happened before. This is not new. It's a different variation perhaps, but it's not new. The relationships go the same way, same part with the money, same part with the health, like same challenges. Like that should be a clue that the common denominator in all of that is you. Ooh, that sounded like Dr. Seuss. And so you are probably waiting for your circumstances to change. They don't. You'll keep waiting. When, when people are in their deathbeds and they ask them about their regrets, there's two things that people overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly report. They don't regret what they've done. They regret what they haven't done. And the second one is they regret living their life to make themselves to, to make everyone else happy and not make themselves happy. That's the reality for 95% of our society. The other ones are taking risks, at least giving it a shot, you know, generally speaking. So we have worked with enough people to let you know from first person experience of working with thousands, tens of thousands of people, what really makes a difference for people. And it has never been managing yourself better, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. It, it'll work to an extent if you can, if you really know how to build good management sets around you. But most people don't even have an environment or a community around them that they can build a team to help them manage all the things that they're trying to manage. So then the one thing that you can absolutely lean on is, is safely going through these experiences in a way that makes a difference. And, and with most therapies, and I'll finish with this and I'll have a little invitation for you guys and a little, a little reward actually um, for, for being here today. Most therapies look at what's happening from the point of view of memory and from the conditioning of the mind. And this is what Mark was asking today, by the way, in the coach's training that I, we never really answered, but I meant to, uh, is that when you're watching from here and you're experiencing your memories from here and it's creating the sensation in your body, you are literally going back into that experience and looping in that same energy and constraints that that energy created. And so in a way, you're reestablishing that trauma. You're actually creating another repetition in that trauma 
And that's why for a lot of people, they go to therapy and they're in there for like 15, 20 years and they don't really feel like they're making a lot of headway. Maybe they develop better managers, maybe. Okay, but I've talked to a lot of people in therapy and a lot of times it's like, I've been in therapy for 15 years. I'm like, holy fuck, you've been in there for 15 years. You're still working on that? Yeah, because you're the, 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 the paradigm of it, that's how it works. But I'm telling you, from the point of view of energetics, from the point of view of awareness, esoterics, you have to, you get to, it's a reward to do so, is come out of the conditioning of the mind yeah. to break free of the matrix. Like today is Passover. Passover is the story of the Jews escaping Egypt. But from the spiritual perspective, it is literally that they are living in the imprisonment of themselves and they are escaping the matrix of their minds. That's really what the spiritual context is for this holiday. So Technically tomorrow, but just uh, yeah, sorry, that was the fifth day. Yes, tomorrow. Not doing a training tomorrow. So today, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> There's a holiday. They do things on these holidays. And so if you want to escape that prison, you want to escape Egypt, right? We all do. Then the way out is through. It's not around. And learning how to come out of the mind so that you're not re-traumatizing yourself, but you can just purely witness is the thing that elicits this intelligent healing response from your body. Your soul knows, your soul and your body knows exactly what to do to repair everything in your life in ways that fundamentally are astounding when you sit back are doing nothing and you watch the field of energy literally resolve everything for you. Now, establishing trust in your experience that that happens every single time takes repetitions. You got to show up. It is a trust fall every single time. But when you finally get to experience it and it starts happening in your life on a regular basis, you're like, okay, that's cool. I can just sit back here and watch the show unfold and some incredible things can start happening in your life. So here's my, my, my call to action for you guys today. Uh, for being here today, I'd like to re reward you by offering a 50% a discount to our live event. We're about 30 days out from our next live event, okay? If you haven't been to these events, they're fucking incredible, okay? And, they, and literally each one gets better than the other. They are jaw dropping. Here's the information down below. You can go to intuitivemind.live to get the information. Please use the half 50 promo code at checkout. It'll take the ticket from $444 down to $222. It's amazing. You will never be the same after this experience. We have people that I think have been to the event now 15 or 16 times in a row. And not because of the content blows their mind every time. It's because the energy that we sit in and the practices that we do. And when you do that in a, in a community set, it's so potent and so powerful. And I promise it will not only shift your experience, you will know yourself in a new way and it will radically shift what you believe is possible for you. And if that's all you ever did with us, it's, it's a very worthwhile two day investment. I promise you. And it's one of our favorite things to do. And I can't believe another one's coming up already. And like, they're just, they're just magical. Elon and I are like buzzing for like a week after every single event and the, yeah. the amount of incredible feedback that we get on these events. Um, and there's testimonials and, Go check them out and like just see if it's a good fit for you. And look, you cannot understand what this event is about. It's going to tell you that now. You can't look at it and go, okay, I get it. I know what I'm going to get from it. You don't. You have no idea. But I will tell you this. There are not many places in the world, if any, that teach this outside of like monasteries and like caves in the Himalayas and stuff like that. And there's very few places that you can practice this with people. And it's going to let you know something about yourself something that you can do, something that you can, someone that you can be, that you didn't even like know you had the capacity to do these things. Imagine you actually found out that your body could do something new. Like today, you're like, oh my God, my body can do that? I had no idea. That's what this is like. It's something that is so novel and so exciting. You didn't even know that you could until you did, and then you can. And so it's something that will pay off for the rest of your life. All our programs have a big, bold guarantee. This is this will help you and give you a return on investment for the rest of your life. That's a guarantee, without a doubt. This will change you in profound ways, in beautiful ways. So half off, 
uh, for those of you guys who watch this training, uh, please enjoy that. It would be an honor to take you through that process and guide you through it and show you how to open all those doorways. And especially for those of you guys dealing with anxiety, this is the way. You can try the pills. You can try the therapies. I've tried them all. This is the way. This is what works. You want to recalibrate. You want to um, co-regulate and regulate your nervous system so that you can walk out in the world and feel grounded and fresh and focused and, and connected and aligned and trusting your intuition and self-expressed and taking risks. This is how the nervous system needs to calm the fuck down, <laughs> basically, you know? So, and, and that's what this training is all about is regulate your nervous system. You are going to see your entire life change. It's a guarantee. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you next week. Peace. Bye everyone.